Let's try this again. All right, we got a couple more, a couple people joining us now. Um, an hour late for our three o'clock live stream. Um, we had some technical issues with our first take and had no audio, but I wanted to provide a chance if anybody wanted to tune back in. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick walk on pretty much the same path that I did earlier. I'll spend a little bit less time on the displays, um, but I wanted to provide this opportunity to give a little bit of a human voice, um, which we missed the first time. So, um, hello, my name is Kyle. I work for California State Parks. I'm out at Fort Humboldt State Historic Park today. Um, this is our take two for our live stream about the uh, logging displays here at Fort Humboldt State Historic Park. It is pretty windy up on top of the bluff that we're at today, so let me know how the audio quality goes. If you can't hear me, I'll do my best to cover the microphone to kind of um, try to eliminate the wind as much. A couple of things I wanna recognize before we get started. Um, I am on ancestral Weot land here at Fort Humboldt. I also wanna recognize that many of you are at home today sheltering in place with um, COVID-19. Uh, I just wanna recognize, thank you so much for taking those precautions. We're out here doing these live streams every day at three o'clock to give you guys a little bit of a peek into the parks, give you a little bit of nature, uh, maybe from your home, and to give you some things to look forward to when you are able to return back to our parks. Maybe we'll show you some places that you haven't been able to explore yet and give you some ideas on some great new places to check out. Um, I've sanitized all this equipment, I've washed my hands, and I'm gonna do it again afterwards, make sure that I'm um, keeping myself safe as well. If I do encounter anybody in the park, I'm gonna make sure to keep that six feet social distancing at the very least. And with that, let's get started on our little walk through um, some of these logging displays here at Fort Humboldt State Historic Park. So we start here um, talking about innovation. Basically this walk here is gonna take us through the development of logging technology up here on the North Coast. And the North Coast was heavily logged um, in the 1850s, starting when people started coming up to this area. So in 1850, prospectors began streaming into Humboldt County in search of gold along the Trinity River, inland from where I'm at now. Um, if you'd like to hear about how people really got started settling at um, Humboldt Bay, we have a video on our YouTube, my very first live stream. Um, we talk about the story of the first overland party who came from the Trinity Mine to kind of um, get people starting to settle in this area, besides the native people who are already living here that we ought. Let's take a walk on down this way. We're getting a break in the rain and a break in the wind right now. I think this is working out perfect. Flybread, tin pans, and misery whips. Tale of the timber beasts. So a lot of these early um, lumberjacks were working so hard referred to as timber beasts because their job was so uh, rough in these early days. Um, I like this quote right here that they'd be woken up at 4 a.m., um, put on grubby shirts, heavy boots, climb into stiff waterproof trousers known as tin pants. Got some great photos here of those massive redwood trees being logged. Um, we're going to take a look at the cabin in just a second, but this is what the inside may have looked like. Um, so many lumberjacks kind of sleeping in close quarters all together. So we have a house right here of what the um, loggers may have lived in, and um, maybe the, the job boss would get this kind of a cabin to himself, but for many of the loggers, um, living in this big of a house on your own would be like a mansion. This would be luxury. I recognize too that um, the logging displays here were all added after the park had been established. So there was no logging up here on the Fort Humboldt Bluff um, where this fort was established, but it did act as a center location Eureka for so much of the timber industry that they decided to include some displays on the logging history here at Fort Humboldt. So here's some more of the tools in here. You can see these massive spiked boots. Make sure you're getting traction on those huge trees. So saying in those early days, you would never find a logger without their ax, that they'd go in to, uh, to get their meals or to church, they'd bring their sharp ax with them. So it was their livelihood. If you guys do have any questions as I'm walking around, go ahead and um, comment. I will be responding to your comments live. 
So this talks about uh, Maggie, who lived at Folk. Folk was a uh, logging town, essentially, and once the logging industry kind of dried up there, the town disappeared as well. This talks about um, this woman right in the middle of this picture here. Her name is Maggie. She was the chef for Falk. She cooked for everyone. And they, um, it says here, the male dominated timber industry. Women found it difficult to find their niche. Single women were typically the only females allowed to work. And those who did have jobs usually worked in the cookhouse. And Maggie, she was not a single woman, but um, in one of the lines here it says, there was no keeping Maggie out of the kitchen. She had a, uh, she was colorful and outspoken with a hot temper. She was gonna work in those kitchens whether you wanted it or not. And preparing meals for over a hundred loggers at once uh, was no easy task, I'm sure. So this talks about the build of the logging industry here, the rise of a lumber um, tycoon, William Carson, who built the Carson Mansion, said to be one of the most photographed Victorian style houses um, in all of the United States. It's here in Eureka, California. Um, this is a photo of it, and um, it is now owned by an exclusive club. Some of these massive trees have been brought in to show um, what kind of trees they were dealing with, trying to fell in these early logging days. And over here is where the technology really starts to um, develop on how to harvest the, the timber in these incredible redwood forests. These trees are absolutely massive, um, hundreds of feet tall, they can be thousands of years old, and to transport something like that at the time with donkeys um, was quite a task. It's one of the early machines they made for making shingles. This is a shingle mill, so this would make the little wooden shingles on the tops of roofs to make places waterproof. If you've ever heard the term skid row, uh, skid row was something that was used in logging as well. We have a little bit of an example right here. Um, so these logs would be lined up and then something could roll over the top of them. So the logs would be made so that they could um, roll as bigger bigger logs or other things they needed to transport came across them. Um, so a skid row was the area where the logs would be kind of thrown down these, uh, these rows of logs to kind of help transport them instead of being dragged around. Where the technology really started to develop was with these steam donkeys, these Dolbeer steam donkeys. Um, these were steam powered wench systems that they would hook up these big logs to and um, drag them around that way. One of the first mills in this area was also steam powered and it was a shipwreck. Um, somebody washed up, wrecked their ship and then built a lumber mill right around the uh, remaining, the kind of uh, steam powered in their ship to make one of the first lumber mills that was up here. Here's some more pictures of early loggers using these massive steam donkeys. And we have a bunch of different iterations as we go down this trail here. You'll see they started relatively not that big and they got their name Steam Donkey because when the very first prototype was put together, the loggers laughed and said it was such a small thing that it couldn't be quantified in horsepower. It needed to be quantified in donkey power. So they called it a steam donkey. You can see over here the machines are starting to get a little bit bigger. Thank you, David, for the feedback. I appreciate it. We're going to keep this relatively short. Um, I did another live stream about an hour ago. Or I spent quite a bit of time at each of these machines, but my audio was not working. So if you want to spend a little bit more time looking at some of the details, all of our past live streams can be found on our YouTube page. Just search North Coast Redwoods. So this is the Will Emmett D Steam Donkey here. Getting quite a bit bigger. And then the biggest one we have here. massive machines used for hauling these incredibly epic redwood logs that were used to build so much of this area 
but for all of California, the timber coming from Humboldt was incredibly important. It was said that some of the redwood trees could be used to build up to 22 houses from a single tree because there was so much wood available from a single log. This talks about some of the dangers here of um, using these high-powered machines. Um, they eventually started to use these cables to float them over their job sites so they wouldn't cause as much um, destruction to the forest floor. But it was incredibly dangerous, this area right in between the winch and the log, because once the steam power, um, the steam donkey was turned on, that, uh, that line would lose its slack very quickly. And if you were in between uh, the line and the log, it was not good news for you. We have another one of the cabins right over here that the loggers would be living in. Again, a large number of loggers living out of one cabin. And some rail cars, which could be used to transport logs, and were used to transport logs around the Eureka area to be later sent down to San Francisco. And here we have a train shed. If you come to Fort Humboldt during the summer with our normal operations, the third Saturday of every month, I believe it is, the Timber Heritage Association runs these trains. So if you do live in the Eureka Humboldt area or just happen to be visiting during the summer, you can come on by Fort Humboldt on the weekend and take a ride on one of these trains. It's not down very far on the tracks, but it's always exciting to get a ride on a steam train. And this engine here is particularly interesting because this came from that town of Falk. So that logging town that kind of disappeared after the logging industry did. Um, this was the train engine that was left over that they were using to haul out um, some of their logs. Another the train over here as well. Two steam engines in this shed. And a big old saw back there for logging as well. A couple of them. So over on this side began with uh, the invention of diesel came along. And that also developed a lot for the logging industry here. And they started using these massive log arches. So these would be hauled by a diesel powered um, vehicle to kind of pull them along the sites, which was a little bit more nimble than using those massive steam donkeys to get it around. Um, it was a little bit e easier to use these kinds of, um, these kinds of vehicles to get into some of the harder to reach areas that hadn't been logged yet. It's also a beautiful spider right here. Gotta love our bugs. So this area was so heavily logged and the old growth redwood trees that were growing in this area and are such important habitat were almost completely logged during this time. It's said today that only 4% of old growth redwood trees remain. And that's not a whole lot. But of that 4%, almost all of it is protected between California State Parks and the National Park Service. So this here talks about the importance of sustainable forestry. So there is ways to go about accessing these logs um, and getting the lumber that we need without necessarily harming the forest. Old growth redwood trees are a unique e ecosystem that takes thousands and thousands of years to form. Um, but there are sustainable ways to access trees and to do healthy logging for a forest um, rather than clear cutting, which was the practice at the time. After they had cut down so many trees, um, they realized that they could eventually run out of this resource. And so they aerial, they used aerial seeding to plant a lot of the trees back in the forest here that had been logged. So they basically flew over in an airplane and dropped a bunch of seeds into the forest. But they weren't just um, redwood trees, it was all manner of different seeds that they dropped. And that actually has caused quite a bit of chaos, even today for the forests, um, that people are still going in and doing sustainable forestry to cut out some of the trees that wouldn't naturally be growing there and to help create a healthy habitat for old growth redwood trees to start to develop. So that's gonna be it for our little, uh, our little timber talk today. Thanks for joining me um, for round two of our small little live broadcast. Um, just a reminder that we do have these going every single day at 3 o'clock. If you ever want to check out uh, what our interpreters are doing in some different parks, um, talking to you about some spectacular things all across our parks up here on the North Coast. We do also have a K-12 through learning program going through the PORTS program. If you go to ports-ca.us, you can sign up for daily 
webinars for K through 12 education. Also talking about Fort Humboldt there. Um, so every day at 3 p.m. and I will be back on Wednesday to talk a little bit more about the fort. Again, thank you all for joining us. And Barbara, I so hope that you come visit us next time you're in the area. Thank you guys all so much for joining.